Solomon's Vegas Adventures. What's up, y'all? We're out here at Lovelock Cave, so let's do it. Lovelock Cave is a very interesting locale, archaeologically speaking. Dating back to 2580 BC, local Native American tribes have used Lovelock Cave extensively for a variety of differing reasons, from storage to living and everything in between. The western area of the Great Basin has been subject to much natural climate change within the past 10,000 years, as the area was once under the Great Lake Lahontan. There was even a lake present in the area as recently as 1,000 years ago. The lake has since dried up, leaving a desolate desert in what was once a lush wetland. Over 10,000 artifacts have been excavated from Lovelock Cave, including duck decoys, sandals, and baskets. Furthermore, a sandal dating back to 10,000 years old has been found in a site within the vicinity of the area. In nearby Spirit Cave, just outside of Fallon, the oldest mummy ever found in North America was discovered in 1940 and has been dated as being over 9,400 years old. One interesting thing about Lovelock Cave is that it is home to the legend of Si Te Ka, an old Paiute myth about cannibalistic red-haired giants. Paiute oral legends regale stories of red-haired cannibalistic giants living in the area. Interestingly, guano miners claim to have discovered mummified remains of a man, quote, over 6 feet 6 inches tall in the cave back in 1911 with, quote, distinctive red hair. They also claim to have found a sandal over 15 inches long that had evidence of being extensively worn and claim to have found fossils of humans between 8 and 10 feet tall with the tallest specimen being 12 feet tall. Even more interestingly, some visitors to Lovelock Cave claim to see giant human footprints in the dirt to this day, suggesting that these giant cannibals are still alive, roaming the lonely hills of Lovelock. Pretty sus, guys. Pretty sus. Is there any merit to the old miners' claims that corroborate with the old Paiute myth, or were they just making that up to bring a quick buck to the area and increase tourism after hearing the Paiute legend? Maybe they really did find giant animal bones but confused them as human. I mean, around Lovelock, there have been fossils of cave bears and mammoths found. Maybe they just found those fossils and then made up the rest. Who knows? But, you know, regardless of what they did find, you're just going to have to watch this video to see if I find any giant red-haired cannibals out of Lovelock Cave. So getting to Lovelock Cave from Lovelock is actually pretty simple. It's about half an hour south of town, and you're just going to take that main road, which I think is called Meridian Street, Nevada State Route 397 south, turn left on Derby Road, turn right on the next right turn that you can, and then just continue straight on that dirt road for about 15 minutes, and you'll get right to the Lovelock Cave. Hey, everybody. We're out here at uh, Lovelock Cave. So let's do it. I'm up here top of this loop looking down into the uh humboldt sink the humboldt river just sinks down there and dries up and goes under the ground the great basin that's one of the great basins here in the great basin and the cave is on the other side of this butte and the town of lovelock is down there you can't really see it because it's super hazy these are the west Humboldt mountains and uh, the air quality is really horrible because there's a huge wildfire just outside Reno in California and the smoke is blowing here. So we had hazardous air quality yesterday and we have quote unhealthy air quality today. Nice view of the West Humboldt Range. You can really tell that it's volcanic in origin just by looking at the landforms. You got this butte, which is this old like cinder cone looking thing. And you've got these volcanic mesas and all that kind of stuff pretty typical volcanic landscape if you look at the rock down here even see that it's a volcanic rock those are all vesicles from when it erupted so pretty cool to tell the geology out here just by looking at landforms you can even see the change in geology here which is really cool it goes from this uh andesite and volcanic flows to this interbedded sandstone and limestone unit that uh presumably dates back to the cambrian that would be my guess given the uh, strata here and the geologic history um, of the area and you can really see how the cave forms in the limestone um and this limestone is right next to this volcanic unit so my guess is there's some sort of fault here or some sort of unconformity uh or this could just be the bedrock and the volcanic unit erupted over it who knows but this limestone is very steeply dipped and there's areas of it that are foliated, um, which kind of tells you that there's been some deformation here 
um, for sure some tectonic processes. Yeah, here's more evidence of this. You can see that this is recrystallized and calcified. That's real nice calcite. And you can see these veins of it, it's foliated. So I wouldn't even call this limestone anymore. I'd call this marble. So this has been metamorphosed. And my guess is that this metamorphism dates back to the antler orogeny, which is the late Devonian to early Mississippian periods over 300 million years ago. Um, you know, that's one of the main structural events out here in this range, in this part of Nevada, in this part of the world. And it's responsible for a lot of the deformation and a lot of the uh, structural deformation out here. And you can just see this marble is foliated and it's banded and it's kind of messed up. So probably the antler orogeny, that'd be my guess. If you look at this outcrop right here, again, foliated lenses, veins of calcite. And look at that, that is highly calcified. Um, I mean, it's just, oh, there's a bird up there in that little cave. It just shows you the tectonic deformative history here. Again, all of this metamorphism most likely dates back to the antler orogeny which was a thin skin deformative event, was a thrust faulting event. Um, and you, you can see evidence of it throughout Western Nevada. This is probably more evidence of it. And this marble, this calcite marble and dolomite, you can see the darker gray up there, is just banded and thrust into these antiform and sinform, you know, structures. You know, you can see that. It's like a Z-fold right there of all of those units of mineral that have just been banded and deformed into that. Antiform and sinform. And that is characteristic of thin skin thrust faulting deformation, which lends more credence to that antler orogeny hypothesis. Those are just beautiful veins of calcite and dolomite. And just seeing how they've been deformed is just, that's pretty cool. And you can see it's even cut by a younger little fault there. So really awesome. Again, just look at how foliated and banded this rock unit is. Again, I thought it was a limestone at first, but taking a closer look at it, it looks like a marble, uh, inner bedded marble and uh, sandstone. And you can see the sandstone units are more over there. And then you've got a dolomite unit down there, which is the darker, limestone-like material. It's like limestone, but dolomite has magnesium in it. So dolomite and calcite are pretty similar, but dolomite is magnesium rich, hence the darker color. Sandstone here, and then metamorphosed limestone here. Metamorphosed limestone is just marble. So it really shows you that um, shallow coral reef to sandy beach depositional environment back during the Cambrian, which is 500 million years ago. And then it's been deformed metamorphosed, altered by that antler orogeny, and then highly dipped and uplifted by that basin and range tectonic deformation starting during the Miocene. So lots of geologic history around here in addition to the archeological history. So enough geology talk, let's go to the cave. Little cave entrance right there. Don't know if that's the main cave, but something in there. And here we have the entrance to the cave. And this cave is pretty significant archaeologically. Duck decoys, sandals, uh, carved wooden grasshopper, blankets, shell beads, moccasins, fishing gear, etc., etc. So, really significant archaeological site. And um, when we go in here, we're going to not take anything we see. We're just going to take pictures. We're just going to keep things with our eyes, not physically. And let's go check it out. So into the cave we go. So very interesting place thus far. Uh, you can see on the ceiling, there's a lot of smoke and a lot of like limestone. And uh, okay, I'm gonna watch my step down here. Some sort of animals that live in here. The bats or bugs of some sort? Beats me, but it looks like it goes down further there. Not gonna go down. Oh, is that water? right there you see that dark black it looks like that might be water yeah that's water seeping through kind of cool yeah there you go is that water or is that some sort of mineral see i'm a geologist and i can't even figure this one out what the hell i don't want to touch it so yeah i'm gonna I'm say that's probably just water 
but then the cave goes further this way. This is the deepest part of the cave. Um, I'm gonna walk back up. And yeah, you can see those beds, that bedding. Uh, huh, looks like a lot of iron staining right there. There's a fault right here, as you can clearly see, very high angle. Um, and that one is going to be a normal fault. So that probably dates back to much more recent than the uh, deformative antler orogeny history here. And you could go back there. Um, so I guess we'll go back a little bit. Why not? YOLO. Um, let's see. I think it just ends right here, though. Yeah, it just ends right here. There's nothing more to see, really. Uh, you can see some real nice calcite right there in the ceiling. Um, and yeah, I mean, nice mineralogy in here of calcite and the like. Um, but that's about it. Uh, they discovered, well, quote unquote, discovered this cave um, in the 19, in 1912, I believe. Uh, some miners were trying to get some bat guano for their mines for fertilizer or whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, I use the term discovered because obviously the Native Americans knew about this place thousands of years before. But yeah, and just a nice view at the deformative evidence here and how foliated these veins of uh, calcite and dolomite are in this marble. And then nice normal fault right there showing you, you know, high angle related to that basin and range of tectonic deformation and extension. Pretty cool. Pretty cool, that was Love Luck Cave. So uh, let's go back to the car now. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Solomon's Vegas Adventures. If you enjoy content like this, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel and check out some of our other adventures right here. As always guys, peace.